Good afternoon. Welcome to our last talk of the um, fall semester of 2015 Korean Studies Colloquium. Um, I have a couple of announcements um, before I begin. Um, first, uh, we have the lineup for um, actually the schedule for the winter um, semester colloquium series. So there's a handout if you are interested, and also you can find the information online. And also the, f um, the first winter film series will uh, uh, the lineup for the winter, wait, yeah, the first winter film series will begin on January 9th, and the lineup will be announced in a couple of weeks, so please look out for that. And if you're interested in receiving more information about it, please sign up um, for an email on your way out. Okay. Today, I'm very delighted to introduce to you our speaker, Professor Kim Baekao. He is um, he's a renowned um, historical sociologist and urban historian. He received his PhD in sociology from Seoul National University, and he is an associate professor in the College of Liberal Arts at Kangun University. Um, his expertise has been appreciated by many in Korea, and it is well testified in, in the key positions that he holds in organizations like the Korean Social History Association, the Korean Society for Urban History, Korean Sociological Review, and Korean Journal of Urban History. But more so, um, it, it is his numerous publications, articles, and edited volumes on Korean and Japanese urban history that has shaped the field. And his this book, uh, published in 2009, Chibewa Kungan, Governmentality in Space, Colonial Seoul, and the Japanese Empire, is undoubtedly the, m the most authoritative book in the field, and it def continues to define the field today. He is also no stranger um, to scholars in the U.S., and he has worked with many of us, including myself and Professor Jae Kim in sociology, and he is currently a visiting scholar at the University of California, you know, San Diego. So I'm glad that we had a chance. We have a chance to um, have him come to Michigan before he returns to Korea in January. And I thank him for taking a break from California sunshine <laughs> and spending a couple of days with us. So, um, I, you know, I'm. I'm very excited about this talk. I know that he is the expert that I turn to myself. So I hope um, you will enjoy the talk today. Today, Professor Kim will give a talk about his new research project on the development of Gangnam. And the title of the talk is Making a New Metropolis in Seoul, the Age of 86-88 as a Catalyst of Gangnamization. Please help me welcome Professor Kim Baekyo. Thank you, Professor Oh, that, well, that's, that's too much. <laughs> well, <laughs> um, well um, I'm really glad to visit here in University of Michigan. This is my first visit at NAM Center for Korean Studies. It is a great honor uh, for me to meet you all and have a chance to talk with you all today. Well, uh, today I'm going to talk about Gangnam. Everybody, maybe everybody knows about Gangnam. Yeah, right. This Gangnam, this famous side song, Gangnam Styles, Gangnam. Well, today's talk is a story not only of the birth of the birthplace of so-called Gangnam Style, which is described in the satirical or outspoken lyrics of a side song, but also of uh, the birth of peculiar Korean type materialistic value, or so-called Korean type snobism, or something. Well, uh, before going directly into today's topic, let me introduce myself about how I have become interested in this theme and what is the main motive of my study. Uh, for more than about the last 15 years, I've been studying mainly on Japanese colonial urbanism in Korea, focusing on the change of colonial soul in terms of urban space. Uh, in the course of dealing with this topic, uh, my study have, has extended to two different directions, one macroscopic and the other microscopic. The first one, uh, a synchrochronic or and uh, microconic, macroscopic one, is led by the question of how to figure out the peculiarity of the colonial modern urbanity in Korea, one of which main solutions, I guess, can be found through 
comparative case studies on Japanese colonial urbanism within the territorial of Japanese empire, like Tokyo, Osaka, Sapporo, Naha, Taipei, Changchun, Dalian, Harbin, not to mention Korean cities like Seoul, Pyongyang, Busan, Daegu, Incheon, well, and so on. Uh, there still left a lot to be studied uh, regarding such questions as not only comparative urban historical studies, but also historical changes in their relationships and colonial or post-colonial urban networks. The second one is a uh, diachronic and the microscopic one. Uh, it is led by the question of how to figure out the social logics of governmentality through the analysis of the materiality of urban space. For example, in case of Seoul, we can figure out a uh, pretty much difference in the logics of governmentality between Li Seungman regime and the Park Chung Yi regime, uh, which can be shown, uh, I guess, through the analysis of the differences of the morphology or pragmatics of public spaces in 1950s and 1960s or 70s in Seoul. Well, uh, well, I, I, I'm recently uh, working on these jobs too. This works too. Uh, as an uh, extension of this thought today, uh, I'm, I'm going to talk about the change of Korean society in 1980s through the analysis of the change of the urban space of Seoul. So, uh, my talk starts from a very simple question What happened in Korean society in 1980s? Uh, if we ask the historical place of 1980s as a decade between 1970s and 1990s, what should be an appropriate answer for the question? Uh, so far in Korean Academy, 1980s has mainly been treated in the context of the dramatic history of Korean democratizing movement, having been originated from the spring of the Seoul in 1980 and the May 18th uprising in Gwangju in 1980, and culminated at the victory of democracy in June 1987. Uh, but complicated and uh, dynamic societal changes uh, Korean society has undergone in 1980s cannot be reduced to one-dimensional political progress. If we should con confront the 1990s to 1970s, omitting the, the medium of 1980s, difference of the two decades socio-cultural atmosphere would be beyond imagination. In short, a, a societal transformation from the age of the developmental dictatorship or total industrialization of Yushin regime to the age of new generations and mass consumerism has happened between the two decades so uh, by the retrospection of the 1980s Seoul, I'm not only going to talk about the change of Seoul or the birth of Gangnam New Town, but also talk about the change of ordinary people's desire or the formation of the ideas of Korean urban life. Uh, by the term Gangnamization, which I use in my title of this lecture, I want to point out peculiar Korean phenomena of how the materialistic values has become dominant Korean minds, Korean's mind. And I'm going to show you that uh, the age of 86 and 88 was the very first place or at least the catalyst of Gangnaminization, which has made the eagerness for money making, outspoken desire for getting worse, uh, to be richer or or so-called uh, snobism overwhelmed the life of Korean middle-class people in the post-democratizational Korean society. As a way of view, uh, I will focus on major mega-events held in 1980s Seoul, starting from Gukpung 80 Bill in Gukpung 81 in 1981, held in 1981, uh, culminating in 88 Seoul Olympic Games and their effects on Korean urban society. The age of the phrase, the age of 86 and 88, 8688, 8688 시대, it, it is a well known phrase among Koreans. This phrase shows the importance of those sports mega events in 1980s Korean society. 
In particular, I, uh, I pay attention to the spatial and the societal influences of the age of 86 and 88 on uh, metropolitan Seoul. To this end, I'm going to make a short detail, uh, detail into uh, two directions. Uh, first, uh, I'll introduce the history of Seoul very roughly, uh, which will show the historical difference of Gangnam and Gangbuk. And secondly, uh, as a prehistory of the age of 86 and 88, I'll explain how Korean authoritarian government, Park Seo-hye government, has utilized uh, sports or sports mega events as a means of governing uh, since uh, Park Chung regime and, and how uh, uh, yeah, since Park Chung regime and how sports mega events has been related to urban development projects during 1960s and 70s. Uh, well, uh, let me explain uh, a brief history of Seoul. Uh, as is well known, Seoul is the surpassing uh, primate city of Korea, combining both the status of Beijing and Shanghai in China or Tokyo and Kyoto in Japan. Seoul has been the overwhelming city of cities in Korea for over 600 years since Seoul was designated as the capital of the Joseon Dynasty in 1394. Traditional Seoul has five divided ad administrative sectors, Bukbu, Nambu, Dongbu, Sobu, Jungbu, all of which uh, were located in today's Gangbuk, not Gangnam, in this area, uh, sur uh, surrounded by, uh, by the walls. Seoul, which was also called as uh, Hansong or Hanyang, as the capital of the Joseon Dynasty, uh, founded on the ideology of Neo-Confucianism, was composed of a castle town inter intersected by Cheonggyecheon River and surrounded by four inner mountains with city walls. Uh, and the symbols were expressed in materiality of urban space. For example, five cardinal virtues of Confucianism, uh, which are courtesy, humanity, right, rightness, wisdom, faith, were embodied by the name of the four gate, great gate and major bell tower in the city space. Uh, well, uh, at, at the end of the dynasty, the project, or that is to say, uh, in at the period of Great Han Empire in uh, 1897 to uh, mainly until 1904, the project of the construction of uh, the imperial city carried out vigorously by the empire, Great Han Empire, or the King Gojong. Uh, including the creation of symbolic spaces of empire like Gyeongungung Palace or Hwanggudan, Wonggudan, or improvement of uh, urban landscapes and the sanitization of the streets, introduction of a modern civilized urban infrastructure like uh, electricity, water supply system, public parks, and so on. But uh, due to the instability of a political condition surrounding Korean Peninsula, it cannot last even a decade. So, uh, Japanese colonial urbanization started uh, with the outbreak of the Luso Japanese War in 1904. Uh, you, as you see in this map, the 20th Division of Japanese Army occupied the Yongsan area as their base, and it still is used as the base ground for the 18th US Army. Uh, by the middle of 1920s, uh, almost all the landscapes of Seoul, which was called as Gyeongsong or Keijo at that time, uh, has transformed into uh, those of Japanese colonial capital city, replacing traditional symbol, symbolic places and historical architectures by the westernized modern or Japanese ones. From the latter half of the 1920s, uh, Seoul has begun to experience urban growth and in 1936, uh, the Yeongdungpo area and the southern western part of southwestern part of Han River became to be included in Keijo, Gyeongsong's uh, administrative district. Uh, with its increase of population up to more than 700,000, uh, almost uh, and uh, almost 1 million at the time of the collapse of the Japanese Empire in 1945. So Seoul was called as Daegyeongsong, the Great Keijo. Uh, at that time. Uh, the Korean War uh, dra drastically changed 
uh, this historic city, the downtown area in Gangbuk was ravaged and not only by the destruction of war, but also experienced severe sl slumism by the occupation of huge numbers of refugees. Uh, furthermore, uh, with the exception of the temporary decrease of population in, in the immediate post-war days, Seoul has experienced a continuous population explosion until 1990s, which also has brought its spatial expansion. In 1963, Seoul became a city embracing Han River with rapid increase of city population from 1 million in 1953 to over 4 million in 1967 and then to over 8.4 million in 1980. Therefore, uh, it should be cl uh, cleared first to build new housings or uh, to make urban landscapes anew, or if possible, making a new town outside the overpopulated or the downtown area. So, well, uh, I think uh, all these stories explain uh, pretty much of why Park jung expanded the boundary of Seoul to include the uh, Yeongdong area, today's Gangnam area, as early as 1963, only two years after the seizure of power by the May 16th coup in 1961. Uh, As you can see uh, in this picture, more than uh, 500 year history of uh, year old history of Seoul, uh, ever since it has uh, it was de designated as the capital of Joseon Dynasty in 1394, has taken mainly taken place mainly in Gangbuk area, right here, or at most right right here. Uh, not in today's Gangnam at all. So-called Gangnam area was included in Seoul as late as 1963, and the development of Gangnam was even much later. Gangnam was only an outskirt of Seoul until 1970s. But as you all know, nowadays it has become a new center of Seoul. Well, uh, let me tell you an episode about this. Uh, the first official history book of Seoul made by Seoul Metropolitan Government was published in 1994 commemorating the 600th year of the capital city of Korea. And uh, the title was uh, Seoul 600년 사, uh, 600 year history of Seoul. But they are going to pub publish a new book next year, it was completed already, which is titled as 2000 year history of Seoul. Uh, in which I myself uh, I invited as an uh, editor and co-author of some part. Well, uh, the 2000 year history includes the history of Songpa, once the capital area of the earlier phase of ancient Baekje dynasty, and, and even Amsa prehistorical site, which is all located in Gangnam area. Well, uh, history changed like this. Now Gangnam is very important area in Seoul. So now let's uh, talk about the uh, relationships with uh, sports mega event and urban development. So uh, as you see here, uh, until 1980, Gangnam is not urbanized at all. Yeah, but uh, from through through the age of 86 and 88, Gangnam was populated. Has began to be populated. So uh, it is well known that uh, spectacular events of sports are an easily chosen and popular means for an authoritarian government to settle down an unstable political regime. Park Chung-hee regime uh, enthusiastically tried to mobilize people by sports nationalism. For example, naming uh, the two national soccer team. Maybe you know. What is it? You mean? Yeah, Hwarang and Chungmu. Yeah. Commemorating the spirit of ancient Shila Shibali and the patriotic loyalty of Admiral Lee Sun Shin, or establishing international soccer games for President's Cup, called usually uh, as by the name of Pax Cup. It's uh, similar to uh, King's Cup in Thailand. Like, uh, he was actually a king, yeah. <laughs> So, as a remarkable moment uh, regarding strategies for hosting international sports mega events in Park Jung era, we can 
uh, remind to cancel the six uh, Asian Games planned to be held in Seoul 1970, which had been hosted as early as in 1964. But Park regime uh, could not help keeping it up because of the lack of financial capability to afford uh, expense for the construction of a new stadium. Keeping this shameful and humiliating experience in mind, Park chung hee has had a strong will to beat Olympic Games in Seoul in some day, and he himself has commanded instructions to acquire sites to build Olympic main stadiums in Jamshil area in 1970s. Since the, uh, well, well the, today's Gangnam area was called the Yeongdong at that time, which means a vast open area located uh, east side of Yeongdongpo. Yeah, it's Yeongdong. Since the Yeongdong area the, uh, had begun to be included in Seoul metropolitan area as early as 1963, land readjustment project for Yeongdong area has begun to be prepared in 1960s. Uh, even cancelled, the, the expectation for 1970 Seoul Asian Games made the Seoul <coughs> metropolitan government to get ready for a new urban development plan for Yeongdong area. So in 1973, Seoul Metropolitan Government made announcement to build a world-class ideal city or a showcase city in Yeongdong New Town area in order to enhance the nation's position, uh, overcoming the problems of uh, the conventional ways of land readjustment project, which had originally been introduced by Japanese colonial government in 1930s. In 1973, the Seoul Metropolitan Government has announced the Jamshil and the Yeongdong New Town plan to develop those areas as one of the world-class ideal cities. The core contents of the plan was to accommodate 600,000 people in Yeongdong and 200,000 people in Jamshil area. It was a it was a comprehensive plan uh, of pleasant surroundings for living providing plenty of public parks and green spaces, keeping population density not exceeding 200 people per hectare, uh, which was scheduled to be completed until 1975. Uh, it is in this moment that Professor Hyungman Kim uh, in Hongi University proposed the idea of a three-core megacity plan. In this plan, created and presented in 1974, uh, the three areas, including downtown downtown area or Gangbuk downtown area and uh, Yeongdongpo area and the Yeongdong area, were planned to be developed as three cores, while Cheonho, Jamshil, Banpo as semi cores. Influenced by influenced by this plan, uh, Seoul has become planned to be developed uh, following the model of one center and seven sub centers system. Uh, including Yeongdong, Yeongdongpo, Hwagok, Suyu, Changampyeong, Susek, and Jamshil as a new sub-centers in the, in the uh, urban master plan of Seoul announced in 1978. You see, uh, this is the original uh, Suriko mega city plan. Uh, this uh, Gangbuk downtown and Yeongdongpo and Yeongdong. Nowadays, Gangnam area. Uh, we can say that uh, this was the first moment that made today's Jamshil. Now we are ready to investigate the change of Seoul in 1980s and Gangnam and Jamshil in particular, influenced by the urban plans created in 1970s. Well, uh, yeah, the infrastructure was made uh, by this, uh, like this. Uh, Gyeongbu Expressway, yeah, and Hanam, Hanam Degyo, uh, which is uh, originally named as the third uh, Hangang uh, Bridge, Chesam uh, Hanganggyo. Well, all those, all these uh, elements are not planned as a whole at, at at the time. Yeah, it was just accidentally combined. Yeah, so. <coughs> now uh, I'm going to talk about the uh, how 88 Olympic Games have been in the making of the new municipal showcase in Seoul. 
But succeeding the uh, carbon, uh, governing know-how of former Yushin regime, uh, the new military government led by General Chun Duhan, uh, utilized mass mobilizing grand scale events vigorously from the beginning. As a typical example, we can raise a uh, Gukpung 81 uh, held at uh, May 16 square in Yeido Island uh, during uh, held during five days, uh, five days and nights in May 1981. Uh, designed and controlled totally by the new government in order to weaken and suppress the political activities of university students. Uh, Korea's official movement, uh, well, uh, Korea's official movement of hosting uh, Olympic Games, which resulted in the so-called the miracle of Baden Baden. Have you ever heard of that? Yeah. Well, uh, actually, well which is uh, held in September 1981. Uh, well, the hosting, Olymp hosting Olympic Games, project to host uh, Olympic Games, it also is a legacy uh, of the unfinished, unfinished project of the Yushin government. Uh, some critical points that caused the, the unexpected miracle of Baden Baden of hosting Olympic Games in South Korea, defeating Japan's Nagoya, uh, can be listed as some favorable environments of international societies uh, created as an aftermath of the oil shock in 1970s and the uh, self-conceit and inattention of Japan, misjudging that the situation uh, is uh, Nagoya's unrivaled stage, as well as the quite unexpectedly aggressive uh, promotions and lobbying activities of Korea at, that, at the last minute. So uh, Korea beat uh, Nag Seoul beat Nagoya by the score of uh, 52 to 37. That's the uh, miracle of, that is called as a uh, miracle of Baden Baden. Uh, immediately after inviting the huge scale sports mega events, the military regime, uh, Jeonduan regime, uh, began to make most of them as uh, make most of them as a comprehensive governing project which was made possible by the support of economic development. Due to the export-driven uh, economic policies, uh, one could witness the miracle of the Han River getting started in 1970s, which has lasted throughout uh, 1980s, with the critical support of the so-called uh, boom with the three laws. Well, uh, I'll skip this. Uh, well, but this picture shows uh, the Kukpung Palsi Bill. Uh, and this is uh, Semal uh, leaders gatherings held at the same place in May 16 square in Yeido in 1980s. Uh, so uh, as I said, uh, the uh, government can support Hosting the Olympic Games with uh, in throughout in and the, the preparation of the Olympic Games uh, due to the uh, boom in the three laws, uh, which is uh, supported by low oil price, low interest rate, low exchange rate. Uh, in this decade, the Korean economy has sung the joys of the biggest boom uh, since Korean history has begun. It was said like that. So, uh, as a result, the size of national economy has increased more than four times in that decade. Based upon this uh, continuous economic prosperity of Korea, a pan-national preparation for 86 and 88 has begun, uh, which included uh, not only uh, the construction of the uh, directly uh, related facilities such as uh, accommodations for foreign athlete, athlete teams and tourists, uh, but also furnishing indirectly related works for city beautification or enhancing urban landscapes such as making advancement in the standards of the road traffic, environmental arrangement of both the surroundings of Han River and the inside and outside of the Seoul metropolitan area, uh, camp campaigning citizens to have a sense of a public order, etc. 
Uh, well, being already populated with nearly 9 million people, urban environment in Seoul were said to show not only severe disorder but uh, extreme unhealthiness. Taking the opportunity of an 86 and 88 project, uh, 86 and 88, projects of making a showcase city to show up uh, the miracle of the Han River has begun. And the three major programs among them we can point out. Firstly, the redevelopment of all the town inside the four gates, all the town area. Uh, secondly, uh, the comprehensive development of Han River area. And thirdly, the, in the intensive development of Gangnam area, particularly focused on Tehran no Boulevard and Jamsil district. First of all, uh, uh, shoddy, cha uh, chaotic uh, landscapes within downtown area and unlicensed buildings called the Daltongne, which mushroomed at the outskirts hill area, were regarded as urban eyesore, threatening the urban landscape and destined to be uh, demolished immediately. Buildings in downtown areas were induced to be monotonized uh, by the abolishment of the building height restriction. So restriction. So uh, remodeling or new construction of department stores, uh, entertainment facilities, and the tourist ho hotels has become allowed. Uh, as a result, uh, over all landscapes in downtown area has transformed rapidly with the appearance of newly built gigantic uh, landmark buildings like Hilton Hotel at Mountain Namsan site or Samsung Life Insurance Plaza and the Press Center and uh, Hoan Building uh, in Sunadong and Gyobo Building in Sejongno and well uh, some others like uh, Korean First Bank Building at uh, Jongno Crossroads and uh, Lotte Hotel in Ulchiro First Street, and so on. All those are uh, built uh, almost at the same time. Secondly, in, in 1980s. Secondly, uh, extensive environmental Im improvement project uh, has been executed around the Han River and Yeido Island area. As some main parts of the project, new city highway designed along the southern riverside of Han River from Gimpo Airport to Jamsil area, which was named as Palpal Olympic Kosokdoro, 88 Olympic Expressway, and the Yuksan Building, the 63 Building in Yeido, which was designed to have an amazing 63 floors and became the tallest building in Seoul immediately after the completion in 1985 has been built. So uh, after that, uh, as you see, the, <coughs> the landscapes of Hangang has changed like this. Actually, you know, as you know, uh, Jamshil was uh, an island, so, and it, 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 came, it became a land after this uh, development of Hangang area. Thirdly and finally, uh, Jamshil Area Development Plan, based on Jamshil Comprehensive Development Plan, plan pro prepared in 1974, uh, marked an epoch uh, throughout the Yongdong Area Development Plan in 1970s, of which innovative characteristics cannot be understood without relation to the Olympic Town Plan. Well, uh, in the history of Korean urban planning, uh, this uh, plan, this planning was very important uh, of these four characteristics. Uh, its main differentiated uh, characteristics can be summarized as in these four points. But I I'll skip this. Well, uh, As a result, uh, well, as you see here, uh, this is, you know, this is Gangnam Gosok Bus Terminal, Gangnam Express Bus Terminal, uh, and the process of construction. And this was, well, actually, there was uh, ten bus terminals in in Seoul, 
sep, uh, separated all around the Seoul area. But uh, Park Chung well, well, it was a uh, Park Chung plan to make it, it uh, concentrated in one terminal. So, it, well, at that time there was nothing. Yeah, yeah that that was a. <laughs> Uh, famous story, mm. and as results, one could witness the beginning of an unprecedented uh, prosperity of construction enterprise and real est estate market. Government's encouragement of the construction of large-scale buildings and large-sized housing for urban beautification provided uh, perfect opportunities for big construction companies, most of which were enduring severe stagnancy of the business because of the outbreak of the Middle East War at that time. Suddenly and consistently, the real estate uh, prices in Seoul began to rise repeatedly, and uh, speculative investment in real estate has uh, began, begun to be boomed, mainly around the Gangnam-gu and Songpa-gu area due to the new plan of building Olympic-oriented infrastructures and, uh, in particular, subway line 2. So the landscapes of uh, Gangnam area has changed in 1980 like this. And this was the landscape of Gangnam before the, the age of 86 and 88. So Gangbuk and Gangnam was, shows this, this kind of contrast of landscapes, but now Gangnam has changed like this. So, <coughs> uh, due to the strong policy impacts of the development, uh, promotion, and housing supply, Gangnam area has begun has begun to experience a sea change into vast and thick forest of apartment. From the beginning of 1970 to the end of 1980, we can witness such a rapid and intensive construction of apartment in Gangnam area, occupying almost 60% of the construction, total constructions throughout the whole Seoul metropolitan area during the same period. Indeed, this area would have generally been called as Yongdong or Nam Seoul rather than Gangnam until the early 1980s. For example, the name of the nowadays Jamshil Sports Complex had been originally called as Nam Seoul Sports Complex when the con construction has begun in 1976. Uh, although uh, the boundaries of Seoul, uh, the Yongdong area had been included in Seoul uh, administrative area since 1963, the boundaries of Seoul were remained uh, confined in uh, Gangbuk area, the, in popular conception of people before the age of 86 and 88. Government's drive to make a new town in Gangnam has been uh, implemented in earnest with the population decentralization policy, of which final goal uh, proportion final goal proportion of population dispersion with only 40% staying at Gangbuk area and 60% moving to newly built Gangnam area. But it was not successful at the uh, first phase. But uh, the key effect uh, is the key element to uh, make people move to uh, Gangnam area was this one. Well. Uh, particularly with the effect of the relocation of prestigious high schools and the formation of Gangnam Parakun, the new eighth school district in Gangnam area, which worked as a main motivation for the pan-national apartment uh, fever phenomena in 1980s, Gangnam has become transformed rapid, rapidly into the fattest of the land in Seoul. Seoul Metropolitan Government announced a new introduction of the balanced development policy between Gangnam and Gangbuk in 1988, which paradoxically uh, proved the seriousness of the imbalanced development phenomena between Gangnam and Gangbuk, forged by the government's Gangnam-biased uh, development policy maintained since the mid-1970s. 
as is shown in this table. Before one knows, uh, Gangnam has become, re become to represent Seoul of a new era, uh, displaying the miracle of the Han River. Sooner or later, a, a, a socio-cultural phenomena of an increasing flow of a public yearning for desire to follow the lifestyle of Gangnam should appear. Uh, now finally, I'm going to add some interpretations on Gangnamization. Uh, to do this, I think we need to know two things in global context. Uh, first, about the relation relationships between sports mega events and urban development. And second, the relationships between the urban development and the urban middle class. It is after World War II, uh, it is after World War II, World War II, uh, that uh, international mega events has started to be used in earnest as an opportunity of grand scale urban development. The so-called notion of Olympic legacy, which means that uh, the Olympic Games can make an impact on uh, urban development in direct and indirect ways has begun to be discussed during the Melbourne Olympic in 1956 for the first time. After World War II, the scale of Olympic Games, uh, after World War II, the scale of the Olympic Games have expanded consistently due to several factors like sharp increase of the uh, participation participation of newly independent countries and the surge of foreign tourists are, uh, according to the technological development of long-distance transportations. The post-war games, hosted uh, particularly by non-Western countries, being too much conscious of the eyes of international society, usually accompanied with uh, gigantic scales of urban developments and the beautification of a cityscape conducted in a short period of time which inevitably entailed excessive uh, physical violence. Generally speaking, the City Beautiful Movement can be explained as a reform th philosophy of North American architecture and urban planning that uh, flourished during the 1890s and 1900s uh, with, it, with the intention of introducing beautification and monumental grandeur in cities. The movement, uh, which was originated from the White City built in Chicago Exposition in 1893 and associated in early stages mainly with Chicago, Cleveland, Detroit, Washington, D.C., and uh, promoted beauty not only for its own sake but also to create moral and civic virtue among urban populations. Advocates of, uh, of the philosophy believed that such beautification could promote a uh, harmonious social order that would increase the quality of life, while critics would complain that the movement was overly concerned with aesthetics at the expense of a social reform. Jane Jacobs referred to the movement as an ar architectural design cult. Uh, City Beautiful Movement has been activated as a means of means to achieve political purposes of such a variety of ideol ideologies as totalitarianism, imperialism, socialism, racism, and so on. Essentially, its common characteristics can be summarized in two points as follows. In terms of uh, forms or techniques seeking for the magnificence of uh, visual landscapes uh, materialized by spectacular and monumental architecture and parks, in terms of directions or agents of the movement, a reformist move uh, from above, uh, being used lacking in consideration of the social, uh, led mainly by ruling clique or upper middle class. Therefore, I propose to conceptualize the socio-cultural phenomena of the classical distinction in the process of Gangnaminization as a unique Korean type city beautiful movement which not only created a gigantic uh, concentration of apartment complexes with astonishing rapidity and marvelous uniformity, but uh, transformed itself into a new model of uh, the enviable lifestyle of upper middle class throughout the age of 86 and 88. 
it is noteworthy that uh, this movement uh, formed a great social flow of pursuing the beautification of urban space, which would be escalated into nationwide phenomena after 1990s, led mainly by urban middle class, totally different from the former government-led project of Yushin regime. But it might be said that uh, the age of 86 and 88 provided a, a critical catalyst for an oppressed urban community under the repressive control system of military dictatorship to transform into a Gesellschaft of spontaneous desires sharing Gangnam Mo, the dream of Gangnam, or uh, the dream to live in Gangnam, sharing it in common, uh, even if it was products of the strategy of distinction of the middle class induced by purpose of a property, property increase by means of a financial techniques or even speculations in real estate. Throughout the age of 86 and 88 uh, and afterwards, uh, Seoul has become to witness the reverse of Gangnam as a super baby born by uh, the miracle of the Han River as well as a brand new built up area boasting the splendor of a uh, grand scale urban planning and uh, the Great Dillion uh, Street Network, of which appearance being totally different uh, from the overpopulation and the deterioration of the old town in Gangbo. Thank you. Han River. Yeah. Uh, it's not natural at all. Yeah. Yep. Well, there are a lot of uh, uh, underwater lands, actually. Uh, well, uh, in t actually, in summer times, uh, there are a lot of blood. Mm. But uh, it was control. Actually, uh, the beginning of the, the plan to develop a Han River area it starts from the multi-usable dams building uh, upper side of the Han River. There are a lot of dams was built in 1970s by Park Seung-hee. And uh, they can control the flood. So uh, so the possibility to, to develop Han, Han River, yeah, it was possible. So, and so, well, for example, uh, actually, Yeoido was not uh, used as a, as a dwelling place. It it uh, even in colonial period it was used as a uh, you know airport uh, on, only as an airport, not for dwelling. Because in summer it it's it's going to be flooded. So, but uh, uh, it is a well known story that uh, the Pamsum, uh, just a small mountain like mm -hmm. island, uh, right next to uh, Yeido, uh, they they bombed the uh, the Pamsum and they moved the all the uh, earth uh, to Yeido and make a uh, what we call the duk duk bank Im embankment. Yeah, they made embankment, which is called nowadays as a Yunjung Ro Yunjung Street, and they uh, uh yeah they plant cherry blossom, so it was famous for Yunjung uh, uh, festival, festival of cherry blossom in summer, in, in springtime. Yeah, that's the, the Yunjung Ro sur surrounding the Yeoido area. Yeah, that's actually made by uh, the earth of, from earth from Bamsam. So that's the beginning of the making Yeoido, yeah, in, in, in at the early stage of 1970s.
Maybe uh, there, the time was short, and uh, my explanation is not enough. So maybe you you can feel some insufficiency in my uh, uh, lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, <laughs> uh, but it, it was ve ve very uh, important questions. Yeah. Uh, mm, well, in comparison with uh, the World Cup games, FIFA World Cup games ho held in. In 2002, uh, co-hosted with Japan, well, the the effect of the sports mega events was not all the same. It uh, it was not it was actually negative to Korean society. But uh, in case of uh, Seoul Olympic Games, uh, well, I mean uh, the specific. Uh, Facilities for the sports mega event uh, was not that useful. Yeah, but uh, it it made uh, a model. Uh, you, you mean the Songpa area, the Jamshil uh, development plan made a uh, model which is very different from the former uh, development models, and they made some kind of very pleasant uh, surroundings for living, and and. They made kind of a uh, uh, plus effect, uh, in, uh, which is because of the uh, Gangnam uh, Eighth Educational Area, uh, uh, the upper middle class has moved to has begun to move begun to move to Gangnam area from Gangbuk in it began from the letter of 1970s, 1970s. So they, 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 and they are powerful classes, so they try to make their uh, living surroundings much nicer places. So uh, that's kind of, uh, yeah. And what there's, uh, you know, yeah, you, this uh, uh, the the notion uh, the theme that uh, the thesis that I made uh, that uh, the age of eighty six and eighty eight made a uh, Gesellschaft. Yeah, that can be. Uh, uh, it's too simple and too much. I think. Yeah, but but uh, what I want to uh, tell you about is that. Uh, it's not only a matter of urban development. It's kind of making different society. In in the 80, 1980s, uh, uh, most of all people think that it was an age of uh, democratic, uh, political democratizing period. But uh, as you know, uh, as you see nowadays, uh, like uh, Im Young-bak regime or Park Geun-hye regime, well, uh, there was an anti 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 democratic uh, regime after the institutional democratization, and what why people uh, take have chosen that yeah that regime? It's kind of I think, uh, and so I I'm. 
I'm asking about uh, when and how that kind of desire has been born. I think it's at the same time in the 1980s, right at the period of the democratizing movement. There were another uh, strong streams of uh, social cultural changes, and that was uh, stimulated by the 86 and 88. Well, it was introduced by the Yushin government uh, from upside down, up, from uh, up to down. Uh, but well, now people are taking, uh, yeah, that, yeah, spontaneously. I think yeah, that that was a change of a change happened in age of eighty six and eighty eight. Yeah. Yeah, uh, mm, mm, it's hard to explain in English. <laughs> yeah, uh, in a broad uh, sense, I think it's it's uh, a phenomena of um, made of the same uh, uh, social logic. I think uh, the Gangnam it can be told as a Gangnam or uh, actually uh, there are a lot of uh, gentrifications in Seoul. I think it, the gentrification is a uh, kind of one one of the express of expression of Gangnam So all Gangbuk area, most of the Gangbuk people want uh, gentrification. But uh, well, when I met some people who live the long time, generation by generations in Gangbuk area, they don't want it. Because uh, people who want gentrification uh, think their dwellings as an asset to sell uh, as a commodity. But uh, if they don't think they, they are not going to live living there, I, I mean, uh, they, they stay there just, just uh, as a home. They think home. They, they don't like it. They don't like gentrification. They they want to just stay there and uh, nothing change. They they don't want to anything to be changed. Well, well of course some infrastructures the reformation of uh, reform of some infra infrastructures that's that's enough I think yeah that's so uh, that kind of uh, uh, struggles or conflicts is now happening I think and plus well. Kind of Gangnam was Baekji, Baekji Sanse, yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it was empty, so everything was possible in Gangnam. But Gangbuk is not on that kind of condition, so it's very hard to change. And uh, the way to do is need, needs uh, a lot of wisdom. I mean, uh, the remaining u using the remaining uh, conditions, elements, how to yeah, just don't. But still. A lot of people doing like demolishing everything and make a grand scale yeah, development plan. So, well, there are a lot of different things happen in Seoul because in in because it Seoul is getting globalized. Yeah, so that kind of different things is happening, but still, uh, still uh, people. 
a lot of people are thinking that their ideal lifestyle is Gangnam, 33평 아파트. Yeah, that's that's uh, Korean middle class, the ideal of Korean middle class. The, yeah. Actually, uh, as I, I'm, um, well, I try to uh, interpret it or theorize uh, this Gangnam Nigerian as a Korean type uh, city beautiful movement, and it still it needs a lot of discussions and yeah, some more um, uh, some theoretical uh, what I can say yeah, development yeah. I think so, but yeah, yeah, we are talking about that point. But uh, well, I'm I'm not talking about 
uh, well, Korean type city music, music movement has much more considerations on the urban life, urban, urban organizing, or something not, not different from U.S. Well, uh, that it's very different, you know, the, the history of the formation of urbanities in U.S. and Korea, and uh, that that's kind of difference, but. Um, when I theorize or when I uh, make a concept, uh, it's actually, uh, especially in English, <laughs> you know, uh, or in Korea it's different, you know. The, the context is totally uh, shared in common in Korean peoples. But, but in English uh, readers, uh, I think it's, it, the concept can be, yeah, uh, feel like, felt like some different context. So I think it needs to uh, yeah, we developed some more, but but uh, what I need uh, wanted to talk is that uh, it's not only a, uh, urban development, but also the, uh, the change of the social atmosphere. So um, and it the Gangnam was kind of new new model of life has has uh, has become a new model of life. And the, the mo new model of life has began to be formed in 1980s. So, uh, at least I can, yeah, argue that that one, yeah. So, so still a lot of things to do, yeah. Uh, well, I didn't uh, explain it enough, but actually, the building of infrastructures in Gangnam area uh, has begun since uh, 1970s in Park Seung era, uh, but government has no money, so uh, they use kind of uh, <laughs> you know. uh, Well, they. Uh, they uh, they did like this, you know. Uh, uh, a lot of uh, riverside uh, lands were underwater. Sometimes underwater, sometimes it, it come out. So, uh, if a private corporation uh, make it, uh, made it, uh, yeah, make it uh, land, then. Uh, the government gave them the right to develop the land. So uh, a lot of uh, like Hyundai Consul or Samsung Consul or all, all the construction companies uh, uh, have uh, have got the uh, right to develop the land, and they want to save uh, the save the cost of design. So they made uh, uniform. Uh, apartment and housing, and uh, Park Jung Hee made uh, all the uh, infrastructures and you know uh, like the school, prestigious school, uh, moved moved to Gangnam area. So people, a lot of people want to move to Gangnam. Well, at 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 ni in 1970s they don't move, it. so so the apartment was not sold at all. But uh, after that kind of uh, political uh, support, uh, people from the upper class, middle, people upper middle class, and others moved to Gangnam area. And now that you know, uh, until the the first half of the 1970s, apartment was not a preferable uh, lifestyle for Koreans. They they don't like it. But uh, in 1980s. Well, upper middle class people in Gangnam area, they all lived in uh, high class uh, apartment. So the people, yeah, MBD, the people, all the people like like it. So you know, you know, you may know Nonturang Apart. 
Yeah. We, in, the, in the rural places in Korea, uh, well, in the local places, there are plenty of lands, but there were apartment houses. Why, why, why do they do that? Because that's Gangnam lifestyle. Yeah. That's Korean phenomenon. So, uh, well, as, as to your question, you, uh, government has no money. So they used uh, people, the, the company's money, and then they gave a uh, right to development to, to, to the company. That's the way how to Gangnam was developed. So uh, one of my points in Gangnamization is that actually Gangnam was kind of a very, uh, very, very uh, bad, not, uh, peop, uh, not a place for a good person, the high class person. It was kind of Yeah. <laughs> As uh, as well described in Hwang Seo Kyung's uh, novel Gangnam Mong, you know, there are a lot of like Gangpae or Tugikun, yeah, yeah. But nowadays, it was uh, uh, the base of Korean upper middle classes. So, it it the the identity of the land, the area was totally changed. From Yeongdong to Gangnam. Yeah, th that's what I wanted to talk, talk about. So it's not kind of uh, success. I, I'm not talking about success. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, uh, now it's kind of uh, an ob obstacle to uh, make progress in Korean society. I think. Yeah, uh, the conservative. Actually, the conservative is uh, attitude uh, has grown in 1980s right inside the flood of the democratizing movement. That's what I want to talk about. Thank you. Okay, any questions? One more. Um, so we've talked a lot about the physical changes recently, um, but we don't talk much about the external changes. Mm -hmm. like Last part once again, please. Um, would you say gang, uh, Gangnamization is like a result of gentrification mm -hmm. and that changed people's like attitude mm -hmm. uh, towards living in the city? But how did it change their attitude? Like, how did they behave differently? Would you say they, they look for high rise apartments instead of like mm -hmm. small houses? Mm -hmm. or Well, if you uh, if you see some pictures taken in, uh, if you compare some pictures taken in 1970s and after 19, 1990s, uh, you know the pe people's uh, appearance changes. That means, well, uh, the phrase in in the 80s, age of 80, 86 and 88. The phrase uh, the government has campaigned to all the people, 세계는 서울로, 서울은 세계로, uh, the world to Seoul and the Seoul to the world. It means that uh, all the uh, all the developed all the peoples from developed countries come to co visit Korea and they will see watch us. So you you will act uh, like a civilized people. Yeah, uh, it, that's kind of uh, everyday life. The cartridge of everyday life is changed by the campaign, and they all almost all the people they don't like even if they don't like Jeonduan uh, military government, but uh, they cooperate to the campaign for the development of nation or the, the country. So, uh, and uh, you know, uh, color television was introduced at the beginning of 1980s. Uh, and the, the economic boom consisted consisted in 1980s. So they made the age of consumer, the mass consumerism in 1990s. So uh, what was started by the campaign of a dictator uh, state 
things, but now it became kind of a common sense of the people in 1990s. But the standards or the model of the standard was uh, made in Gangnam, and that's kind of have some uh, lacks of ethics or, well, some community uh, consciousness or they just want to uh, succeed by individual or making money. Yeah, that, that is what I want to talk about, yeah, in, in the term by, by the term in the term of Gangnamization, yeah. It, it's, so it's kind of a total everyday life attitude, so it's not, I cannot pick that one. So, you know, uh, the life in a uh, traditional house and the life in apartment house is totally different. So using, using by car, you know, uh, the Korean jere shijang, the jere shijang and the market, uh, uh, traditional market, and the big market with the, the parking lots, you know, th that kind of change has, has a, a began, began, yeah. So that's the difference, yeah. People met face to face. Now, uh, in 1990s, well, my car, the age of my car has started, so that's totally different, so. Thank you.